poor Joe Joyce just got zhanged again. I picked Zhang to win by late stoppage. I think I said nine rounds. Well, he only did it six rounds earlier than that. Joe Joyce came out in the first round moving. He was circling to his left away from Zhang's backhand. And he actually looked quite light on his feet, particularly considering the fact that he came in at a career heaviest. But he wasn't actually landing any punches. So the movement was good, but there was no punches off that movement. In the second round, Again, he's trying to move around a little bit, but there's no punches coming off the movement. Zhang starts landing punches and he's getting Joe Joyce's timing down. And once he got Joe Joyce's timing down, Joyce started coming in at Zhang because Joyce instinctively is a guy who, as soon as he gets hit, wants to fire straight back. And that came into play in the second round. And towards the end of the round, Joyce started getting lit up like a Christmas tree against the ropes. He stayed in the pocket for a little too long. Zhang not only got his timing, but he started bringing both hands into play because Zhang is a good puncher with both hands. He's got that explosive hand speed. And when I say explosive hand speed, he doesn't have Moses Itama level hand speed. And that hand speed really was crazy. I know Itama was fighting an absolute pie on the undercard, but his hand speed at the finish was crazy. Okay, we'll talk about that in a separate video. But for a guy as big as Zhang is, nearly 290 pounds. He's got good hand speed, okay? And he started putting those shots together at the end of the second round. Joe Joyce, legs were stiffened several times. He was clearly in trouble. The writing was on the wall at that point. Then in the third round, more of the same, Zheli Zhang lowered the boom. And rather than the backhand, which Joyce had become very wary of, it was the right hook from Zheli Zhang, which he's been very successful with in many of his fights, even against Filip Pergovic. It landed bang on Joe Joyce's chin. He went down and the fight was over. Poor Joe Joyce stopped in three rounds. A worse result than last time, despite the fact that he'd worked on so many technical things. Him and Ishmael Salas said they were gonna do things differently this time. Well, they tried to do things differently, but it just wasn't good enough. Zhang was able to adjust to Joyce's adjustments and get him out of there quick. So there you go. Chat-ish, get Zhanged. That's what happened to Joe Joyce. Now, I want to say a few things about Zheli Zhang here. After the Hergovic fight, that's when I really was sold on Zhang. That's when I realized that he was much better than I previously thought. Because I saw him in the Jerry Forrest fight and he seriously struggled. He completely ran out of gas late in that one. But he said he had some type of health issue going in. And based upon what I've seen since, I have to believe that he was telling the truth about the health issue. Against Hergovic, I thought he looked very good. I thought his skills were good. Again, the hand speed, the punching power with both hands. And I said, I think it was either going into the first uh, Zhang Joyce fight or straight afterwards, that for my money, Philip Hergovic has got a better chin than Joe Joyce because I've never bought this idea that Joe Joyce has got a granite chin and iron jaw. I was quite baffled by people who were coming out saying this stuff because again, who's Joe Joyce actually been hit by on the chin prior to facing Jelly Zhang that can actually punch? He was hit by Joseph Parker. Parker's not a massive puncher like that. He fought Carlos Takam. He's not a massive puncher like that. Yes, he did fight Daniel Dubois, who can really crack, but Dubois never really caught Joe Joyce on the chin. Don't get it twisted. He's got a good chin, but there's a difference between having a good chin and having a granite chin or an iron jaw. And I saw Joe Joyce get cleaned out in one round by Sergey Kuzmin in the amateurs. And he was in his late 20s when that happened. You're not suddenly going to have an iron jaw in your late 30s when you didn't have one in your late 20s. Doesn't happen. So yeah, I never bought into that. And I think now people can see what I was talking about with regards to Hergovic. Hergovic has got a better chin than Joyce. Look at the shots that Hergovic took from Zhang in their fight. He never got ironed out like that. And he took clean ones on the chin, just like Joyce did. But he took him a lot better and he recovered better. So yeah, I think uh, Hergovic's performance, even though people slated him for that performance, actually looks a lot better now against Zhang in light of what Zhang just did to Joe Joyce twice. So yeah, Zhang is now the WBO interim champion. Frank Warren, who still has him under contract, I'm not sure for how much longer, but according to Warren in the post-fight interview, he still has Zhang under contract. He says Zhang will fight whoever the WBO champion is probably in the mid part of next year, or that's when the WBO 
are going to call that mandatory. So he's got a quite a while to wait. What is it going to be? Like nine months or something like that. Maybe to nine, ten months. So we'll see what he does in the meantime. Will he stay active? Will he have a run out? Or will he just wait for his shot? Because the heavyweight division is very perilous. Joe Joyce could have waited for his shot. He chose to take on Zhang and it backfired in spectacular fashion. Will Zhang make the same mistake? Or if he does fight somebody, will it be a pie, a cream puff? Somebody that he can just bowl over in a couple of rounds or you know just use for target practice we will see but Zhang is at 40 years of age a very interesting heavyweight because he's got skills he's not just a big puncher and in fact let me say something about Zheli Zhang's punching power from what I've seen of him in the Hergovich fight in the Forest fight twice against Joe Joyce I'm gonna say right here that Zheli Zhang is a top three puncher in the heavyweight division for my money the only two other guys that I would put next to Zhang in terms of punching power are Deontay Wilder and Bakadir Jalilov. Those are the top three punches in the heavyweight division for my money. I think all three of those guys hit harder than AJ. I think they hit harder than Ruiz. They hit harder than Fury. They hit harder than, as I say, for my money, everybody else in the heavyweight division. Those are the top three. Deontay Wilder, Bakadir Jalilov, and Zheli Zhang. The difference with Zhang though, compared to Wilder and Jalilov, is that he's got power in both hands. Whereas Deontay Wilder and Jalilov are more one-handed power. So that gives Zhang kind of, I want to say an advantage or an extra dimension to his power game over the likes of Jalilov and Wilder. And in fact, in my element group, a lot of people were talking about who would win between Zheli Zhang and Deontay Wilder. And I think that is a really intriguing fight. In fact, I think that's a more intriguing fight than Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder because Zheli Zhang is confident. He's not a guy who's all shell-shocked like AJ is. Zhang is, you know, riding the crest of a wave right now in terms of his self-belief and he's got power in both hands. I'm telling you right now that if Zheli Zhang lands that right hook or the backhand on Deontay Wilder's chin, Wilder is done. He's done. If you think that Tyson Fury hurt Deontay Wilder, well, he did hurt him. You've seen nothing <laughs> compared to what Zheli Zhang can do if he lands on Deontay Wilder's chin. Wilder's finished if he gets hit with, again, the right hook or the backhand. Now, people say that Deontay Wilder is much faster than Zhang. I would say his feet are much faster, but I think Zhang's hand speed, yeah, maybe you'll say Wilder's right hand is quicker than any single punch Zhang has got, but Zhang's combination punching is fast. And of course, he's got that right hook up front, which can catch you. He can throw it as like a check hook. And Wilder is not anywhere near as skilled as Zheli Zhang. Don't ever get that twisted. Zheli Zhang is the much better boxer. He's much technically better than Deontay Wilder. I give Zheli Zhang a very good chance of beating Deontay Wilder and knocking him out. Yes, <laughs> I think he could definitely do that. I was very interested. And a lot of people at the time were not with me on this, but I was very interested after the first Zhang Joyce fight in seeing Zhang in there against Tyson Fury. To me, that was an intriguing one. <laughs> I thought that was actually a dangerous fight for Tyson Fury. Many other people didn't. I certainly did. A southpaw who can punch with both hands, who's got explosive hand speed like that for a man of his size. Yeah, I think Zhang is definitely a player in the heavyweight division. I'm not saying he's the best out there or anything like that, but I think he's dangerous for anyone. I think he's dangerous for Fury. I think he's dangerous for Usyk. I mean, would I pick him over AJ right now? Probably yes. And I know AJ beat Zheli Zhang in the Olympics. I watched that fight and he beat him well, but things have changed. Anthony Joshua isn't the fighter in terms of confidence that he used to be. And as I say, Zheli Zhang is at the top of the mountain at the moment in terms of his confidence. So I would probably pick Zhang over AJ if they were to fight next. I mean, Zhang against Ruiz, that's intriguing. And here's another thing I forgot to say. And I actually mentioned this in a previous video. I think it was after the first Joyce fight. Zheli Zhang is better than Luis Ortiz. Oh yes, he is. <laughs> Zheli Zhang had a better amateur record than Luis Ortiz, right? Middled at the Olympics. He's bigger than Luis Ortiz. For my money, he hits harder than Ortiz. Even though he's old, he's actually younger than Ortiz, right? So yeah, I think he's a better fighter than Luis Ortiz. And look at the wins he's got now. Many people feel like he was hard done by not getting the decision over Hergovic. So some people are going to count that as a win. And of course, two wins over Joe Joyce. That's better than anything on Luis Ortiz's record. <laughs> and that's just as a pro. As an amateur, Zheli Zhang achieved more than Luis Ortiz. He's better than Luis Ortiz. Better than he ever was. I know that's going to hurt some Deontay Wilder fangirls out there. Don't care. <laughs> yeah, Facts matter. And he has achieved more than Luis Ortiz ever has. So yeah, Zheli Zhang, very interesting addition 
to the heavyweight division. Let's see what happens. How do you guys think he would fare against any of the guys in the top 10, top 15, but particularly the champions, particularly the marquee names, the Furies, the Usics, the Wilders, the Joshuas, Andy Ruiz, so on and so forth. I think if there's going to be somebody to give Zheli Zhang his second loss, again, if you count that loss he had against Filip Hergovic, if there's somebody to give him his second loss, I reckon it's going to be somebody with quick feet, who's athletic, who can get in and out, who can offset what Zhang likes to do. Because again, Zhang isn't going to want to track down a much faster footed opponent. That's going to be difficult for him. Yeah. And you saw that in the first round against Joe Joyce, but Joe Joyce couldn't marry that quick foot speed he showed in the first round with quick enough hand speed to actually punch off the movement. But there are fighters out there who have quicker feet than Joyce and very quick hands where they can punch off the movement. Yes, I'm talking about the likes of Alexander Usyk, obviously, but also the likes of Frank Sanchez. Oh yeah, do not discount him. He's a dark horse in the heavyweight division. Now, as for Joe Joyce, I've been speaking about Zhang here, where does he go? Well, I think the obvious fight for him, assuming the appeal isn't successful, is a rematch with Daniel Dubois. They're both Frank Warren fighters, so do the rematch. Let's see how they get on in that one. Other than that, I don't really know what's out there for Joe Joyce right now. I mean, would Eddie Hearn want to put Anthony Joshua in with Joe Joyce coming off a loss? You know, maybe he'll feel like, okay, maybe now's the time to take it. Maybe Anthony Joshua would feel confident going in against someone who's coming off a knockout defeat, you know, because they're both in a rehabilitation stage of their career both rebuilding. So I don't know, maybe that's an option for Joe Joyce if he were to get that offer. Uh, what else is out there for him? I mean, it's going to be a long road back and at 38 years of age, having his chin cracked in that way, stopped in three rounds. He doesn't have the, well, to me, he never had an aura of invincibility in terms of his chin, right? We all know that he could be beat. We all knew that, but a lot of people bought into this idea that he had an iron jaw. I think he did as well. Now that's gone, it's going to be a lot more difficult for him moving forward. He's not going to have the same confidence. He's not going to just be able to walk forward and bulldoze people anymore. He's going to be thinking about what happened in that Zhang rematch. So he's going to have to rely more on boxing ability, using his jab, similar to what we saw in that Daniel Dubois fight. That will be successful against certain fighters, but against many other fighters, it won't be. So you have to really uh, think about that when it comes to matching him. Who would his style, if you think about the uh, version of Joyce that fought Daniel Dubois, who would that match up well against? Would it match up well against Andy Ruiz? Maybe, maybe that could be a decent stylistic matchup for him. Would it match up well against, who else is out there? Makhmadov? Mm, probably not. Makhmadov would probably drag him into a dogfight. Makhmadov doesn't have the skill of a Zheli Zhang or the hand speed, but Makhmadov is a, a real handful and he's confident right now. So that probably wouldn't be a great fight for Joyce. But at the end of the day, at 38 years of age, you don't really have any time to rebuild. You just got to get straight back on the horse and go again. Maybe have one comeback fight to try and get a bit of confidence. Then you got to dive straight back in at the deep end. You have to at 38 years of age. He's not 33. He's not 34. He's 38. So that's what it is. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And in fact, I want to leave with this final thought. Some fighters stay amateur for too long. Joe Joyce might be one of them because he beat some very good guys in the unpaid ranks, including Bakadir Jalilov. I mean, that was a great win for him when he beat Bakadir Jalilov. He might have spent his best years in the amateurs and just waited too long to turn over. Uh, if he turned over, let's say, I don't know, maybe when he was 28, 27. In fact, what, did he turn pro when he was, I think he turned pro when he was 30, right? If he turned pro maybe three or four years earlier, might have had a better run at the heavyweight title. Obviously he hasn't fought for the heavyweight title yet, but might have had a better run. That is a lesson, I think, for amateur fighters out there. Because these days people are staying amateur for a long time because they wanna secure a lucrative professional deal. Sometimes for the good of your development as a fighter and getting the best out of yourself, you might wanna not worry too much about 
going to the Olympics and all that kind of stuff. As long as you've won some type of titles, doesn't need to be the top, doesn't need to be the world championships or the Olympics, uh, because you're gonna be making the big money in the professional game in the long run anyway. Yeah, you might get signed for a big contract if you're an Olympic gold medalist, but so many Olympic gold medalists don't fulfill their potential and they never end up er earning the real big money anyway. Audley Harrison being a good example. Yeah, he got a million pounds, whatever it was, when he first turned over from the BBC. But after that, there were no real big paydays, maybe a bit of a payday against David Hay, and that's it. So sometimes it's actually wiser, if you're thinking about the finances, to turn pro younger and, again, get the best out of yourself when you're still in your athletic prime. You know, learn professional boxing because it is different than amateur boxing. The emphasis is different in professional boxing. So this is why I was so happy to see Moses Hatalma ignoring all the calls for him to go to the Olympics, just turn pro. If you're a precocious talent like that, with that kind of speed and athleticism, and he can punch too, let's see what you can do early. There's no need to wait till you're 25 or 26 to turn pro. Yeah, if you're a precocious talent, let's go. If you've got the confidence like Atalma has, let's go, let's see what you can do. I'm glad he turned pro so young and he's actually pushing himself. Yes, it's a gamble. Everything in life is a gamble, people. <laughs> There's no reward without risk. If you wanna be great, you have to dare to be great. That's a risk that you're taking there. So I commend the Talma. As I say, I'll talk about his fight in a separate video. But for now, we'll leave it there about Joyce. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. And before I go, I wanna give a shout out to all the new subscribers to my Patreon page. I cover loads of different topics in my weekly podcast, as you can see on screen right now, from current events to deep dives down the rabbit hole and everything in between. I'm really enjoying the feedback and the discussions we've been having on there lately. So if you'd like to join the conversation, just click the link in the description box below. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? Then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalog of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract. No commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page via the link below this video and select the tier called the Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.